Now you may be asking yourself, Josh, why are we talking about Dread in 2012? Well, if you may remember back in November of this year, I reviewed V for Vendetta, a comic book movie I had never seen before, and I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, this is going to be kind of a series, I guess, where I just go through comic book movies that I've never seen. Dread is definitely one of them. Um, if you don't know what Dread is about, it's based on a comic series, Judge Dread, where it's in this future dystopian society where there's three different uh, sanctions. There's the criminals or the punks, there's the judges, which is these group of people who are basically as a police force, and you have the mutants, which is these group of people that are very hated, they're very seen as freaks. And yeah, this movie, the only really association I have with uh, Dread was probably from the film from 1995 starring Sly, um, Judge Dread. I remember seeing him when I was younger, thinking it was pretty okay. I mean, he's great in it. He really does have that chin, but yeah, it's not very good. So this movie, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, there was a lot of people who really loved it. And yeah, like a lot of people, I really loved this movie. I thought this was a lot of fun. It has its, it's very serious. It's a very serious film given the topic of it, but also some very funny moments, some very good comedic moments, and we'll get into all that. So what's Dread about? Similar to the comic, it has the same backdrop, it stars Carl Urban as Dread. Now, you know him, of course, as Bones from Star Trek, or Butcher from The Boys. He is just your typical, he's also in so many other comic movies, Thor Ragnarok. He is your typical average, you know, nerdy guy that you see in a lot of movies and shows, and he plays Judge Dread in this movie. And he's great. I thought he did a fantastic job. He, of course, did way better than Sly. Because he doesn't take his helmet off. And from what I can understand from the comics, Judge Dredd never takes his helmet off. Which is something that this movie does. And it's something that is great about it. I'm so happy he never took his helmet off in this movie. Because it would have taken away from so many good things about this film, in my opinion. Where it's just, you never see his face. But he has that kind of hard edge, kind of like Robocop, even though you see Robocop's face in some scenes. He mainly covers up half his face throughout the, that film. Here's kind of the same deal, and it gives for this mysterious vibe. What does he look like? Of course, he looks like Carl, or Carl Urban. But yeah, no. Also in this movie, you have this rookie character, Anderson, who has a troubled past. Past She is a psychic in this film. She is considered to be a mutant. Actually, one of the um, criminals in the movie... At one point, says that she's more of the lucky ones because she doesn't have, like, three arms or whatever. And, yeah, she is very, very cool in this. I think the scenes of her psychic abilities, like the scene where she has this dude, like, one of the criminals that they have to capture throughout most of the film, in this little psychic mind melt thing is so cool. And it's really messing with him. I really like this scene a lot. She, her acting in this movie was very good. And the ending with it, where she decides not to be a... Uh, judge anymore because well she um uh, just wants to use her abilities for to help to avenge her family in a more different way and i thought that was really interesting i thought that she was gonna actually end up in the movie being like oh i'm actually judge dread's partner by the end but no it actually ended in a very natural and conclusive way and for her character which made a lot of sense the villain in this movie mama jubilee something like that she's okay she's not your average kind of angry villain in this. I thought the hacker guy was kind of a little cooler, like the red dude with the long hair. He was actually pretty cool, I liked him a lot. And you can tell that he has been tortured by this lady for a while, which you see in the flashbacks where they take his eyes out. Um, and yeah, I thought she was okay, I thought he was a much better villain. Um, there's also some other twists and turns villains in this movie. You have other uh, judges that are crooked, and they start working for the mob boss. And that was very, very cool. Um, uh, I didn't actually I didn't see that coming, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, also, this movie mainly revolves around this drug called slow-mo, which is, of course, a ton of slow motion. But it, I, from what I can understand, the filmmakers did the slow motion in a way that they have no one's really done before, at least in 2012. And it's done very, very good. Not only is it a, be is it beautiful whenever they get into the slow motion sequences, but it's also really, really well done. And for a movie with kind of a lower budget... I really enjoyed those scenes, and I really had a lot of fun with them. And the drug itself is like an inhaler type thing, so it makes sense. They're like, smoke and all that. Yeah, no, that wasn't too bad. And the action in this movie is so fucking good. The action here is some of the best action I've seen in a comic movie, probably ever. 
it's not like the most standouts just this like run your face artsy action. It's more of your standard hand to hand combat. But something this movie does that a lot of movies don't really do, especially when in 2012, it kept the camera still, <laughs> which is something you were like, well, I mean, you kind of want that in a film like this, and yeah, it happens, because I guess around that time there's films like Jason Bourne, so I was expecting the camera to be going over the place, but no, the cameras kept still, the action was very well handled, I had some great moments where I would pump my fist and be like, yeah, get him, Judge Dredd, that was, it was really fun, and I really enjoyed those scenes a lot. My favorite is probably whenever he was getting cornered by the, dre the dre like the other uh, dreads or the judges, as you may say, in the little um, uh, place where they make the drugs and all that. That was fun. That was a good scene when he blew the dude's head off. And whenever the other one came in there and he just had a gun, dude, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, this movie has some really, really good action. And it's also part two that the fact that this movie is like so rated R. And it helps it so much. With a movie like Judge Dredd, you want this to be rated R, and it is. It's very rated R. Unlike the movie with Sly, Sylvester Stallone back in 1995, this film actually has blood and guts, like apparently what the comics had. In the comics, I, from what I can understand, were more of like a parody of other film, of like other things, or whatever. And I thought that kind of goes well into this too, with the narration. It does kind of feel parody-ish. But it also makes it for its own unique film that was still enjoyable. I still had a lot of fun with. And yeah, I had a lot of fun with Dread. Um, yeah, no. The depths in this movie were definitely really good, especially in the main villain. The head just goes around the ground. That was really, really fun. And when this movie started, I didn't know what to expect with it. I was like, well, I mean, I'm excited for this movie because I keep I I was like hearing about it for so long. To, I'm really surprised that I haven't seen this movie before leading into this, but yeah, no, when it started, I was like, I don't know what to expect, and after it's over, I want to read Judge Dredd comics now, I want to go to my local uh, Barnes & Noble or my local comic book store and pick up some Judge Dredd comics, because this movie made me really interested in the character, and I really want to learn more about what mutants are in this world. And what this means, that's more of my one of my one complaints, is I wish we saw more mutants, more than the Anderson character. That she was great, the actress who played her did a phenomenal job, but I wish that we would have saw more mutants, because I just was really intrigued by that idea. And I know in the film from 1985, they do show them, but it's not really to good effect. <laughs> this movie, I feel like, if it got a sequel, which it hasn't, which is terrible, it's been like, what, 10 years since the first, since this movie? And it still hasn't gotten a sequel? That's frustrating, because this movie is definitely one that deserves a sequel, deserves a continuation, because this world is so interesting. I, he, at the end of the movie, he says, there's so many different factions, there's 800,000 million, whatever people lived in the city, and it's just like, I want to see that city, I want to see more, because this movie mainly takes place in this building, the raid style, but it's also really, really fun with that too, but I wish we would have had its fun with it, but I wish that we would have got to see more of the city. I wish we would have gotten to explore that, which for this movie had a lower budget, so you can't really do that. The movie was also using a lot of its budget for the slow-mo sequences, which I do really appreciate. Indred's amazing gun. That's just so cool. Um, but yeah, no, also I noticed with the look of Dread in this movie, in the comics, he has more of a, like, he looks more army-based, and with, like, little, little wings on the side of his uh, shoulders. This movie, he looks more like a police rioter kind of look, which definitely falls in line with the movie, with what it's trying to say about police forces and all that, which I also liked in this, how he wasn't completely, you know, like, like judgy, like he was in the original film from 1995. That movie, he kind of just was kind of annoying. This movie, he gives people a chance. He doesn't, like, mess with kids. He gives them a chance. He gives everyone a chance, and... That's nice, because he isn't, like, entirely, like, you're going to jail. Now, he's like, okay, please don't do this to turn yourself in. <laughs> and, yeah, I thought that was really, really fun for the character, and it gave him a little bit more of a interesting background, to where he's not just your typical, just like, oh, just go to jail. Um, but, yeah, no, all that said, I enjoyed Dread a lot. I thought this was a fun movie, a really enjoyable movie, that if you were to criticize it, yeah, there's a lot of, there's some things you could really criticize. But as a comic book adaptation, that really didn't need, that really deserved a sequel and never got it. I guess for the poor box office, the fact that the trailers mainly marketed 3D 
the trailers this didn't look very good. I actually watched the trailer after this movie, and man, that trailer did not do a good job with like saying what this film actually was. But yeah, with all that being said, I really enjoyed Dread a lot. And there were some comic movies I really want to watch, like Sun City, The Losers, Sun City 2, um, and there's this one called The Spirit, uh, there's this one called, there's another one, uh, The Shadow, I want to watch that. Um, yeah, there's so many films I really want to watch, um, like I did this year with The Crow and with V for Vendetta. So without that being said, Judge Dredd gets a pass. Just kidding, that was a terrible, okay. Uh, Judd, uh, Dread gets an A+, of course, gets an A+. <music>